Welcome back, everybody, to the 2017 Jay Swanson Memorial, the Swanee, being held on cue billiards here in San Diego or La Mesa, California. This is your hot seat match. This will be the eighth match these gentlemen have played. It's going to be Brian Parks versus Francisco Bustamante. Uh, gentlemen started out with 126 other players, so 128 total yesterday morning and uh, they're down to the last five people in the tournament you have Francisco and Brian as they're about to square off here you have Mitch Ellerman and Bebe Gallego battling it out on the one loss side and you have Oscar Dominguez waiting to take on the winner of the one loss side match and then the winner of that will play the loser of the two gentlemen you're about to watch we're in cold and rainy Southern California and joined today with me will be Ashi. Oh, cool. You're not on. I think this is somebody. Fine. Yeah, there you go. It's there better go. this way. No, you don't have to hear me through your uh, <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Quick uh, introduction. Those of you who don't know me, my name is Ashi Fatchler. I'm a billiards photographer and an interpreter and all-around nice guy. And the guy with the link from around here, boy, accent. No, I'm you know? from Tucson, Arizona. Yes. <laughs> I come from Barcelona. Barcelona? No, actually, I come from Israel. I lived okay. there many years, and I've uh, been living in uh, San Diego for quite a few years. Tucson, you know my friend Dan Wallace. He used to play. I do know Dan. He used to play here, too. Correct. Yeah. Right. He's a good friend of mine. No, Dan well. Well, here we are. Uh, this is nine ball, race to eight on the, w on the winner's side. Um, this is... Uh, Alternate break format. They're using the magic rack. The three foul rule is in effect. Three fouls by the s consecutive fouls by the same player is loss of game. And um, uh, right now, I believe. So, for those of you who don't know, Brian Parks comes from Bakersfield, California. He's a new room owner. He, he has his own room now. Oh. But he's been playing on the semi pro and amateur. Uh, circuits for quite a long time he the fact that he made it of course to this match against uh, francisco bustamante shows you what a player he really is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, he, he i think he just won uh, the for the fourth time the apa amateurs he's, okay. he's a very good player uh, out of bakersfield california well i'll, I'll uh, second that motion because i actually played him last night and he was my first loss on the w on, on the winner side but as the Fargo rating shows, he's a 704. He's a 704, you know. Huge uh, underdog. Yep. Because Francisco is almost a 100 point uh, superior player. And when you're a 100 points uh, difference, you're almost twice as good. So actually, fa uh, Fargo rate would say that a good match here would be 8 to 5. 8 to, Gi four, giving eight to 5, up yes, given, giving giving up three everything. games. Sure. But we'll see how it actually um, works out. Francisco has had a very strong tournament. He's played seven matches. One person got to three games. Uh, the rest got to one. So basically, it's been 8-1-8-1-8-3-8-1-8-1-8-1. Including his match against Oscar Dominguez, oh, the defending yes. champion mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. this tournament. And mm -hmm. Oscar sat in his seat most of the time. I have yet to watch Francisco play this weekend. But he's always a pleasure to watch uh, for everybody out there. Just watch that nice, long, smooth stroke. And it, see that little sing song? It's got a nice rhythm to it. And when he comes back, watch that cue stick come all the way through his fingers and then back in again. Not only uh, when he has a full uh, bridge on the table, but when he, when he bridges on the side of the table, it comes all the way through and hits the table and goes through his fingers. Uh, it's something amazing to watch. It's just Many uh, have tried to emulate oh. Francisco's yeah. stroke. In fact, Francisco said himself that he tried to emulate Efren's stroke when he was much younger. Mm -hmm. and then he came up with his own version of it. Well, I, I, I think a lot of the Filipino players, uh, you know, well, they grew up with Efren. Absolutely. So who, uh, who wouldn't want to emulate um, the greatest a hero. player. One of the, gr the greatest player yeah. in pool. Yeah, exactly. Pool. Absolutely. And Francisco is nothing to sneer at. He's been on oh. the professional winning side of pool for the past 
two decades. Francisco has more. been, in my opinion, Francisco has been one of the top, uh, I'd say, what, 20 players in the world uh, for the last 30 years? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember him. I actually saw him for the first time in 1994 in L.A. when he came to play and young. He had a mount mullet. He was smoking and it was, <laughs> well, see, <laughs> it was I don't a remember different that far back. Oh, it was a fire in his eyes. 1994 mm -hmm. was the first time I saw him. Well, I played back then. I used to play, but I never got out of Tucson. I, I think just it was the Commerce Casino is where really? he played that. Okay. Yes. Well, Brian's about to take the first game. He is, and that's the first time anyone got the first match over on the Francisco this uh, tournament. And he does take the first game. Francisco doesn't, I think this is the first time he's been behind. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't trailed the whole tournament. That's, I don't think he yeah, has. That's yeah, that's what you just said, really. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, right behind us, we have uh, Mitch Ellerman and Bebe Gallego. Uh, battling it out. I believe, what's the score over I there can't now? can't see. Uh, Mit two Bebe has two. Yes. Two and two. It's still two-two. Two two. Two. This is a long game. It it's been at two-two for a while. Yeah. They've been going back and forth, I guess, on this one game, playing safe after safe. But That's uh, interesting. I saw Ramil Gallego at about the same time that I saw Django Bustamante, about 1994, mm -hmm. maybe uh, playing uh, some of the tournament circuit. Uh, you know, hanging out with uh, the likes of Parika and such, mm -hmm. uh, the, the first contingency of uh, Filipinos to come and play in the U.S. Bustamante I didn't breaks. I didn't recognize him. I, I, I don't, uh, I've never met the gentleman before, or even known of him. Um, we came in Friday evening from Tucson, and uh, Mitch ended up playing him for, uh, they played for 100 a set. Uh, and they went back and forth, back and forth, ended up even. And, um, Mitch can Just play. Getting Everybody oh, knows that. Mitch of course can that. play. Of now, course. now they're playing each other here. In right. The in the tournament. Yes, in the tournament. And yeah. they've had a taste of each other, so uh, and I they think have an idea. I think uh, Ramil has been in money games ever since he arrived here in well San Diego. Didn't he, just, uh, didn't he just leave a big money game with Archer from back east? I think he might have, yes. Yeah. That I think he got the worst of it, but yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, don't mess but still, Archer, who doesn't still, get the worst right? of it playing Archer? At his home, uh, <laughs> on his table, yes. Yeah. Francisco's playing safe behind his four ball. Is he going to get there? I don't think he did. I think uh, he's, left he's, a, uh, uh, he's left a long shot, but he can see it. He may have to spin to avoid that, uh, both the four and the two. I think. But he can see the edge of that one. And if he, he can, can see, see the, the rail. Edge, if he can see the head rail, he can kick the one ball down by the four nine. That's and probably and, what and he's stick going the cue to ball. do. Yeah, stay, leave the cue ball yeah, up there. Yeah, the cue ball will stick. No, he can see it. Oh, see. I still would have kicked it. Yeah, moved it to I the I still would have kicked it. Sure. That's an old-timer safety. I've seen that safety played from when I was first growing up playing pool. And, you know, I don't see it as much anymore. A lot has changed. Maybe styles have changed, mm -hmm. strokes have changed, you know. When you played, there was not no such thing as a Filipino stroke, I take it, when uh, you were younger. No, they well. That's no. They were around. I mean, I I started playing pool when I was 15. I'm about to turn 65, so I've been playing pool for about 50 years, rather unsuccessfully. But I still <laughs> like the game. You're still <laughs> trying. I still try. That's right. But um, um, or at least that's what you tell everyone mm -hmm. you play, right? That's what I don't know how to play. I never trying. said that. I've never said that. I know what goes where, but I just don't do it as often, or I don't do it like I'd like to. Let's put it that way. I was mentioning earlier that it, uh, from watching uh, Francisco play, you can always tell when he's very comfortable when he leaves his reading glasses in the head. middle of his forehead. Do you he know he that does he's playing He does that a lot. He does. He, he does, does that, that now lot. more often than not. Are they reading glasses or uh, are, are they vision glasses? I think they're reading glasses. I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty sure. I, 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 see him with them, yeah. I see him with them on a lot. So. Yeah. Well, he reads stuff. Yeah. Plays chess. But it looks like we're going to have uh, game number one for Francisco on the board. It will be all tied up at one. Now, will he draw this or follow with three I rails? He wants to draw two rails, actually. Yeah, see, two oh rails. Just one. Yeah. Well, hit hit come off the one. Correct. There we go. Center rail and perfect mm -hmm. position. And just with that, the score is tied 1 1. 
Francisco doesn't care who he's playing. He's playing his yep. own game. It doesn't mm -hmm. really matter who mm -hmm. he's playing against. He's pretty much seen it all and played them all at this point. Well, uh, keep in mind he's what? Uh, how old is he now? Is he about 50? Yeah, I think so. I think he's middle 50s. Somebody will in the chat will let us know. 54? Well. Steve? How old is uh, Francisco, Francisco? Bustamante? We'll find out. We'll, let well, you guys uh, we'll see if we can find that, get that information. And um, we're not, we don't have, we're not privy to any kind of a chat. But like I said, this is their eighth, eighth match. They've both played seven matches. Um, Brian uh, just got done. I believe he played um, Mitch Ellerman. Yes. And put and sent Mitch over the one last side. He's 53. According okay. to uh, oh, you got that the quick. grand own knowledge of internet, he's 53 okay. years old. He was born in 1963. iPhones are awesome. Yes, sir. Not very good on the table, but yes, sir. <laughs> good break by Brian. Look at this. He's made uh, three balls, and he's got a nice shot on the three ball. Um, the only problem he has is running into that four, but it moves it to the seven, and it shouldn't be I too bad. I don't think he's going to hit the four. He might clip the five ball when he cuts the three. If he doesn't, he will He will clip the four. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, see, he clipped the yes. five ball just a little bit and, and hung up the and overcut the he overcut it, so he would have clipped the five ball more. Yep. So, but he's given up, uh, he's relinquished control of the table. And that's not what you want to do against a player that like was Bustamante. Yeah, exactly. That was someone that's controlling um, as successfully he has all weekend, the table. I think uh, Bustamante is looking for a better looking bridge. He didn't like the plastic one that came with the table and he changed up to a metal bridge. By the way, the clicking sound you may hear. <laughs> it's just Sashi's camera going off. It is. It is what I do. He's just here to entertain you guys too, so. Trying my best. Oh, oh hello. Miscue. Big break for Brian. Very no. big break for Brian. Francisco also moved the five ball using the bridge, and it's Brian's choice if to put it back or leave it exactly where it lies. Correct. And I think that Brian is just going to leave it right there. Oh, sure. Why really would you move matter. it? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. It's in the middle. It's, it's, not, uh, it doesn't, it's not in his way in any way. No. Um, it didn't put him at an advantage mm -mm. or disadvantage mm -mm. at this point. Now, if I, of course, uh, me having the choice, I'd put it in front of the side pocket. Yes, of course, because <laughs> that's place. where it was, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's the player's choice, of course, to put it as near to where he thinks it is. Notice was. that uh, Francisco left the rack right there. Let it give something to Brian to think about. I'll leave the rack in the middle of the table. You can move it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't think Francisco will bother moving it, unless it, uh, when he gets ready to shoot the nine ball, maybe. Right. And Brian's the same way. He won't move it until he gets ready to shoot the nine. He might not even move when he shoots the nine. Because he's hoping to have perfect shape, so it won't matter. It would have been ugly to watch it roll by or get on it right now. See, now he stopped right on top of it. He did. And, and that's what I was talking about, moving the, the rack. This is why you want to move it. Just to get it out of the visual sort of... You, you don't want anything else... Very nice shot by Brian. Very nice shot. And now he says, yeah, you know yep. what? Yep, I'm yep, yep. See, that now out. I'll move it. He'll draw the spring this straight back for the nine. Yeah. Brian's new room was just redone. He added a few uh, televisions. He has a lot of uh, touring pros that are driving through mm -hmm. Bakersfield. Bakersfield. Stop, yeah, stop at his room for a good game. I know I saw a picture of his... Uh, room at home. He's got a nine foot diamond, he's yes. got a uh, seven foot diamond right next to each other. I think that was his ma man cave. Yeah, that's a heck of a man cave. Now he has a, a professional uh, mm -hmm. room. You haven't seen the Dominguez's man cave. Oh. I'm sure that's nice too. Dime, but I'm sure they don't have diamonds. 
No, I don't think they do. More than likely Brunswick, because they've worked yes, on I Brunswick's think Brunswick, forever yeah, in, I in think a day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are the ones who actually set up this table here that we're looking at. I this is a Dominguez <coughs> table. Mm -hmm. Your typical four inch pockets. Um, Brunswick with four inch pockets. Um, and I will say one thing they're all cut perfect. No, none of these off angle no. sidings or anything. They're cut perfect. This table plays very, very nice. Yes. And it's right now, with the addition of the five CSI lights that uh, make it as bright as it is, it also warms up the table and dries it out with the humidity, you so know, it's rolling much faster. You know, I spoke to Mark Griffin about mm -hmm. that yesterday. I said the same thing. The table mm -hmm. is, we know the table's rolling fast, and I said, it must be the lighting. And Mark said, no, these are fluorescents, they're cool, and they're not uh, contributing to the I agree, uh, but role. I agree with that, I with Mark's side of it. But uh, every tournament I've seen where they have this type of a setup with that many lights over the table, I've seen a couple of nine-foot tables set up with ten lights, and that table has always rolled almost twice as fast as the tables in the same room yes. away from that lighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, I think it's just whatever wha whatever it is, um, it translates into speed. This and it's the bed. Watch the bed. Yeah, just watch how it rolls.